Now, welcome to another news from Naboo with Thor's lightning takes. Mm. And let us get right to the news. Right to the news again. So hasty, Master Mariotic. <laughs> okay. First news story up today. Rumor has it that Kenobi may be being scored by the Loki composer? Is that his name? <laughs> Her name. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Touche. Touche. Oh, God. So, beyond the main theme being composed by the man, the myth, the legend, John, John Williams, Williams yeah. there's not been an official announcement who's on a, who's exactly scoring this series. There's a lot of speculation out there. The two most talked about names are Michael Giacchino and John Powell, both of whom have worked on previous Star Wars films, but Lucasfilm doesn't seem to like to reuse their composers the way Marvel does. Well, they, there's one that they have reused a few times. <laughs> like, for nine movies and three trilogies. We don't, we don't talk about it. Well, he's, he's already being used. They can't use them again. I know. I'm just saying. Again, they again. They do like to reuse. I, I wouldn't say that they don't like to reuse. But <laughs> there's one who can probably, anytime you wanted to, they would say, oh, yeah, come do some Star Wars song music for us. So, Michael's actually very busy right now and highly sought after. Just this year, he did The Batman, and is currently working on the third Jurassic World, Lightyear, and Thor Love and Thunder, as well as directing the upcoming Marvel Halloween special, Werewolf by Night, for Disney+. Plus. He got a full roster. That sounds like a lot of composing. A lot of composing, and he's directing. Hmm. That's, that's a... I mean, he's, he's busy. I'm going to put him out of the running, then. All right. You're dismissed. <laughs> uh, John Powell, who did Solo... Uh, only has one film upcoming, so it is possible. Well, I mean, it would have to be pretty soon, right? I mean, we're a little over a month away. I'm assuming that it's already done. Sure, so I guess his schedule, his upcoming schedule, is irrelevant, if that's the case. Right, but uh, Michael's too busy. He Still had weighed... Too... Well, like, think about it, he just did the Batman. He's getting well, done with Jurassic World, okay, Lightyear, well... Thor, Love and Thunder. He's got... I mean, okay. they're I coming out probably... relatively soon, so he... May not have had time for Kenobi because all of those movies come out in a couple of months. Maybe he's just really good. Like, sits down one day. <laughs> sits down and powers it out. And everyone's like, it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's perfect for Star Wars. Just one draft and you're good, right? That's mm. how we do it in Star Wars these days. However, there is a recent rumor from the John Williams Fan Network. He has a fan network. It sounds like a network of spies <laughs> who like keep tabs on what he does. It's actually suggesting that the Loki composer, Natalie Holt, could be the secret composer. Bum, bum, bum. She has been under the radar with Loki being her first breakout score. And she's only got two projects on the horizon. Batgirl and I'm going to call it Coke Bear. <laughs> Coke Bear. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a Coke bear, but you're not talking about that kind of Coke. I'm talking about some white powder bear. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to use that word. Okay. Eh. I don't know what, what YouTube looks out for, so I'm going to be careful. Probably they're not fans of that word, I would imagine. <laughs> I'd imagine. And for credibility's hmm. sake, there are plenty of stories from this particular forum poster that have been true in the past. But one thing's for sure, we have to find out soon. I wish I could say I remember the Loki score. Which is, you know... It was it was interesting. It was different. I actually liked it quite a bit. It had an eerie vibe to it. Hmm. Is that what we want out of Kenobi? An eerie vibe? Well, just because that's the vibe they went with for that project doesn't saying, mean I... that that's like her signature thing. Yeah, I'm only saying nothing sticks out, which is usually more of a bad thing, I would say, if you don't remember the soundtrack at all, rather than remembering it for being bad. Well, I remember soundtracks from movies way better than I do for video games, mainly because we're getting a repeat of the main theme over and over again, but TV shows will, like, they vary them up per episode sometimes. Well, sure. I do remember the Loki theme quite clearly. I don't. I feel for you. I'll play it for you when we're done. I know you will. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't play it beforehand. I just expected you to remember. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> You expect too much out of me. But it's funny because if you heard it playing, you'd probably scratch probably your head and, I'll probably and you'd go, oh, I know, yeah, I know yeah. this. And be like, all right, yeah, yeah, I've heard it, I've heard it. <laughs> That's so many things you do that with me. You know, like, I'm like, I don't remember that. And you start to play, oh, yeah, yeah, of course I do. Yes, of course. Okay, well, let's move on to our second story. Book of Boba Fett is getting a Disney Gallery special on May the 4th. Yeah, so the Disney Gallery is an inside look. This time, it's focusing on the first season of Book of Boba Fett. This is coming out as part of Lucasfilm's annual Star Wars Day festivities. 
So we'll be getting a documentary dealing with the behind the scenes of the show. Kind of with like a uh, making of with cast and crew interviews. They made these for The Mandalorian as well. Kind of establishing a one episode per season approach. I mean they do the same thing with with the Marvel shows. Calling it like Marvel Assembles or something of the ilk. <laughs> or something of the ilk. Ah yes. Yeah we haven't got any news of anything else is coming from May the 4th. But we usually do get a couple of things from Disney Plus, so we're going to be on the lookout. I don't think we'll get too much on May the 4th, only because three weeks later is Celebration. Well, they don't give us, like, huge things, but, like, uh, they like to give you Star Wars stuff on May the 4th. I mean, we had a, was it something Bad Batch thing came out? Bad, some Bad Batch thing, I think yeah. it was the day they had, like, one of the Star Wars, I think it was one of the later Didn't Bad episodes Batch come out on the 4th. On... Yes, mm-hmm. okay. That Bad Batch thing. You may have heard about it you or know, seen it. That thing. That thing. But no, they, they, like, know, they the like to set a premiere day so that Star Wars fans all go, it's May the 4th, hooray! Here's a new Star Wars thing for us to ex- be excited for. Well, I hope there's not too much news or you'll be doing news from Naboo by yourself. I'm going to the uh, Brewer game for Star Wars Day. I'm sure all the fans would love it if I do news from Naboo <laughs> by myself. No, they wouldn't. <laughs> they would hate that. They would miss me. No, they wouldn't. I would say probably not. There'd probably be much, <laughs> much better and less interruptions, and it'd probably be like two minutes long, no rambles. Just the facts, ma'am. Yes, instead of <laughs> Thor's ramble takes. Uh, no, we would just record it the day before or something. No, we would never do that. <laughs> well, As we do that right now. We're doing now. that literally right now. It is. It is Wednesday night. Very late on Wednesday but because yeah, we will not be around tomorrow much. No. But we wanted to bring you the news anyway. Well, yeah, we love doing this, and hopefully. You so you're gonna watch well. the Boba Fett? Well, absolutely, yeah. I've you, watched I know the other you watched ones the for... Mandalorian ones. I, I saw you watching it, though. I was busy at the time. Yeah, busy not watching it. Traitor! <laughs> oh, don't even start, <laughs> traitor! No, they were both pretty entertaining, actually. I'm curious what kind of things they'll say in the Boba Fett one. Will they say things that kind of make you look watch it through a different lens, and you're like, oh, so they didn't do it this way because he couldn't, or they couldn't do this? They couldn't. No, I don't think they're going to go that. You don't think they're going to try depth. and salvage some of the rep for the show? Well, I mean, I think, I mean, I don't think they ever want to try to pretend, <laughs> pretend like, or kind of admit when things are not. You know, loved by the fans. Certainly the sequel trilogy, if you would ask, you know, anybody at Lucasfilm, you know, what do you think about the fans who don't like it? And they go, oh, there's fans that don't like the sequels? <laughs> but at the same time, this is a chance for them to do light damage control. I don't think they feel they Simply need to do... Simply saying Tamora Morrison, like, couldn't do some of the stunts, so they went a different yeah, route. I, I Could be a, a little bypass for them, if that is the case. I don't think you're going to see anything like that. I think it's just going to be your standard kind of behind the scenes. I mean, I'm not but saying that they But they could also tell you then but... why we got two episodes of The Mandalorian in the middle. They're never going to I mean, that's that. going to have to be included as to some of the choices that they made, or maybe why they made them. Well, I think I'm I'm kind of of the belief that they started to film season three of The Mandalorian. Something went awry, and then Boba Fett kind of took over. Maybe I mean, Boba Fett was that. just never meant to have as many episodes as it did. I could see Boba Fett having was meant to be like a storyline in The Mandalorian. I don't know. It the, just it feels very. I mean, but at the same time, knowing now the story of Boba Fett, it couldn't have really gone any other way. Or you're like, why did Grogu show up? Well, sure, but I mean, maybe he didn't show up originally, or who knows? I mean, it's just... Yeah, they would have had to rewrite that ending. I, it'll always remain such an oddity that they kind of just had Mandalorian just hijack two episodes of the Book of Boba Fett. They just mm-hmm. threw... I mean, it really has... I, I, mean, I understand Mando been... shows up for the finale mm-hmm. and all that. He's in the final fight and Grogu. But I mean, it could have just literally been, I'm going to call my friend Din Djarin. He owes me one. <laughs> and he'll show up and no one would be like, well, why does he show up? What was he doing? No, you would just be like, okay, yeah, Mandel's going to show up because he owes Boba Fett one. It could be something like they were worried the fans were getting Mando withdrawal. Cause they, well, they did delay the season. The season did get pushed back. And I honestly was like, ah, oh, I have to wait so long for more Mandalorian. So maybe they thought, maybe we'll just throw this in there for the fans. But it's such Maybe a, this was something they were intentionally trying you, to do for us. could have just had him show up for a couple episodes and that, that they did. could have quenched your thirst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, but they did and exactly actually have then. Boba Fett in the episodes as well. <laughs> I don't know if you could quench, quench some people's thirst, thirst for, for Mando. There's some thirsty people out there watching this. Jeez, show. <laughs> where are we going with this episode? It's, sorry, right? it's late. It is late. My yes. filters go off. I know. The later, the more tired you are, the more interesting <laughs> you speak. So one of these days, I'm going to wake you up at three in the morning. Like, come on, news from Naboo. They need to see <laughs> no, what you really like. Nobody needs to the see three a.m. edition. Three a.m. edition of, of news, news from, from Naboo. Naboo. It'll be a lot more colorful and entertaining. <laughs> I'll say, I'll say that much. <laughs> But no, Aww. I mean, am I excited to see this? Yes. Do I do I think we're going to get any kind of like explanation as to why we had, 
you know, the Mando episodes, why maybe it wasn't exactly what people want. I mean, I think you could, I'm sure they'll kind of try to explain what their mindset was with the character. But yeah. I don't know if it's going to be as a, like a response to fan complaints, per se, if that makes sense. But it could be. It could be. I don't know. It's going to be pretty pretty much your standard. Here's your look behind the scenes, some cool, you know, information, and that'll be probably about it. I guess we'll have to live with that. We will. All right. Well, until the 3 a.m. edition, that's all we've got for you this time. So take to the comments below. Tell us what you think about our stories today. And until next time, thanks for watching.